Cover us and lift us and encourage us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be true and pleasing and only from you. Amen. Amen. So here at New Market, we've been uh, going over covenants. So uh, within the next week, I hope you can find it on YouTube. Uh, we'll send it out on an email, so I'm not going to cover the first two, other than there was eight major covenants, and each of those covenants, most of them had a sign. So the rainbow was a sign of the what? You guys awake out there? You with me? You had an extra hour of sleep. The rainbow, right? The promise, right? I will never, I will never war on man again. I'm not going to flood any anymore. The sign of circumcision was Abraham's obedience to God, right? Everybody that was uh, under Abraham's lineage would circumcise. So there's these signs that sealed every covenant. And we had talked about how God had done his covenant with Abraham by cutting up pieces of animals. I hope you had something to eat, right? Because this, this sermon just might uh, set you off a little bit, but they would cut up, they would slaughter animals. And God said to Noah, do this. Make a covenant with me, and I'll sign it. And so those slaughtered animals were on each side, right? And this will become evident as we get to the table, the communion table. Slaughtered animals are on each side, and on a contract, basically the two parties would walk through those animals, repeating the terms of the contract. And basically saying, may this be done to me if I go back on my word. But God comes to Abraham... And Abraham's sitting there. Abraham, he actually puts him to sleep. And then he wakes up and hears God evidenced by a smoking pot, an eternal flame walking through the pieces, saying, I will do this. This is a covenant on God, no matter what. No matter what Abraham does. No matter what Abraham does, I'm going to make him a great nation. I'm going to make his descendants as numerous as the stars. I'm going to make his name great. And through him, all nations, all peoples will be blessed. The Messiah. Salvation. Redemption. God says, I will do this. Now, also in this covenant was the Mosaic Law, which we covered last week, right? And the Mosaic Law was given as a conditional law. The others was God said, I will do this. The Mosaic Law is, if you do this, then I will do that. 613 blessings and cursings. The whole law. As we discussed last week, what the purpose of the law was. The law, Paul says, was good, it's holy, it's righteous, and you can't keep it. You can't handle the law. The law was to point us to sin and our sin against God. And I'd use the analogy of a speed sign, speed limit sign, right? How many of you like to speed? I do. I like to get there and get there fast, right, Harry? So I'll use the analogy that if you're riding on the road and there's no speed limit signs, you can go as fast as you want. Right? As soon as a speed limit sign comes up, you've got to make a decision. <laughs> you're going to say, I'm going to go 55 and get there three hours later? Or am I going to continue to speed? And so we make that decision, right? And that's why like, you know now. You know what the speed limit is. You know what breaking that law would be. And there's consequences to that law. You pay a ticket, right? For the Jews, there was consequences, right? You were not, did not have a relationship with God when you sinned and broke the law. And so they had this thing called the temple system. And in the temple system, there were sacrifices, and they were blood sacrifices. And according to how much of a sin you did was what you would bring to the temple to be sacrificed. <laughs> so if you brought a dove, maybe you just gossiped a little bit, right? If you bring a lamb, maybe you coveted. If you had to bring a bull to the temple, you were in some deep doo-doo. <laughs> you had some trouble. 
And so here it was in the temple system, a sacrifice would just cover a sin, atone it. And when it says covered it, it doesn't remove it. It covers for it, right? So that you can be back in relationship with God. This had to be done over and over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. And here is this dumb animal. Oh. Innocent. Has no choice in the matter. <coughs> the pastoral land. The land. And if we think about that, we'll take it to the communion table a little later on. Innocent. The animal has no choice. And you go and you offer the sacrifice. It was offered three times a, a day. And let me tell you, most of the time, it was like that hamster wheel. I'm sure after I would get done doing my sacrifice, I'd walk and almost make it to the gate. And look at that Jewish girl. I was like, wow, she's nice. <laughs> I'd go back and do the sacrifice. <laughs> right? She just said that. You think it. You've done it. Yeah. And so here was this perpetual, perpetual thing. And then once a year, the high priest... Mm -hmm. He would go into the Holy of Holies to sacrifice for the people collectively as a nation. For the people's collective sins. It's part of the temple, right? Mm -hmm. It's this temple system. In a temple system, there were barriers. If you were a Gentile, you could go no further than the first court. Mm -hmm. If you were a Jewish woman, you could go to the second court and go into the third. Mm -hmm. If you are a Jewish man... You could go into that, that last court, but it wasn't the last. Fifteen steps higher, court of the high priest, right? Mm -hmm. Court of the priest, and only they could go in, and the bread of the presence was in there. And then, in that court, there was a curtain that separated the holy of holies, the mercy seat, where forgiveness could be found. And once a year, the high priest would go in behind the curtains mm -hmm. so holy that they would tie a rope around their ankle. Because you don't know if that priest is coming back out. There's precedent. There's people that try to stop the ark from coming, falling off the wagon, right? Boom, dead. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. in an hour or so, whatever it takes to do that sacrifice, if there's nothing happening, you just start tugging on the rope. And get him out of here. That's how holy it was because no one, no one but the high priest could go in that, in that place. And so God says, I have a new covenant, Jeremiah 31, right? And this covenant was with the Israelites. He says, I'm making a new covenant to where you're going to be truly free. I'm coming. Because I'm the only one that can take away that sin. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one that can defeat death. Mm -hmm. And in the fullness of time, God came in Jesus Christ, incarnate, fully man, fully divine, right? Mm -hmm. And he entered into our long-term suffering as man. He entered into the same bondage that we are bondage to, sin and death. <laughs> and he resisted temptation. He suffered hostilities. <laughs> he suffered hostilities from us, humankind, <laughs> who put him on the cross. It's our humanity. We are people who are cross builders. Just look at your news. Just look at our streets. Look at your cities. We war on each other all the time. So Christ goes to the cross. And before he does that, he sits down at a supper and tells his disciples, 
I am giving you a new sign. Gospel of John puts it right in Passover. And on that table would have been the Paschal Lamb. The innocent Lamb. It would remind him in the days of Exodus when the law was given of how that lamb was slaughtered and its blood was put on the doorpost. <laughs> Why was the blood put on the doorpost? So the angel Passover, Passover, right? The angel of death. You would be saved. Jesus gathers at that table. He says, you know what, fellas? I'm reinterpreting this meal because there's a new covenant. Mm -hmm. You're under the law, and the law cannot save. The law cannot save you one day. And he gave thanks to the Father and said, I am the bread of life. Through me you will be sustained. Through me your grief will be healed. Even not as the, the grief that the, the world grieves, my presence is going to comfort you, going to guide you, strengthen you. Mm -hmm. I give you this promise. And he gave thanks to the Father and said, this is my body. Thank you, Lord. And he broke it. And what did he say? Do this in remembrance of me, right? Christ walked through the new covenant seal. He walked through and says, I will do this. Believe me. God is doing something new through me. And this is going to be your, one of your signs. Tell the disciples the whole time, going to the cross. The disciples before that, I will destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. And on that cross, with the resurrection, Christ destroyed that temple system. And every barrier was gone. Mm -hmm. Book of Mark tells us up on the cross, right? Jesus died, breathed his last, and what was torn into? The curtain. The curtain. Access to the mercy seat by our high priest who was the innocent victim who said, I will, in obedience, plus our high priest. It's the only way it could be done. Yeah. He took the cup and gave thanks. He poured out the wine and gave thanks to the Father. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you. Tell the way that you can be free. Don't hang on to that law no more. I did this so that you could be free. <laughs> and on that cross, God through Jesus Christ took our sins. Yeah. God's wrath on sin and death, not on you. No. On disobedience to God was poured out on God Himself. Poured out in the blood and the Holy Spirit so that you can have that righteousness. That you can have freedom. Freedom from the law. It doesn't put the law, say the law is negated. Paul says it's holy, it's righteous, it's good. And only through faith in Jesus Christ can you fulfill it. Christ gave his righteousness to us and he said live into this. Don't try to do good. Live good. Yeah. Live into my presence. And every piece of that law you want to keep because you want to, not because it's a demand. Do you see the freedom? You've been forgiven.
given. Christians shouldn't be following the gospel. No. The law and gospel. It is faith plus nothing. Faith plus nothing. Thanks be to God. Because yeah. it's a faith-based relationship, not a work-based relationship. Third day, the temple is rebuilt in Jesus Christ. Death was defeated. And you folks that are freshly grieving, remember that. There's victory. And there's a promise. And we know God is good for his promises. One day, Jesus is coming back. You better look busy. <laughs> Jesus is coming back so that all things will be fully restored. Until that day, we have the communion of the saints. Until that day, we have the signs, the body and the blood of Christ, that this covenant has been sealed and signed and is yours. And so prepare your hearts to come to the table. You'll come by the guidance of the ushers. Bring your flowers. Bring your loved one with you. And remember that promise that one day we will be joined back together. The Negro side, uh, Casey will come by and get your flower and put it in that collective communion of saints basket. So will you pray with me? Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit be on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may go into the world and be his presence. Fill up these grieving hearts, dear Lord, with the knowledge of your love, that you poured every bit of it out for us, and we are so grateful. So as we come to this table, that we come with the saints, we come with our loved ones, we come with the church, we come with the church in the world. We ask this all in your precious Son's name, as we say the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Last Patty, please follow the guidance of the ushers.